Hello everybody, my name is Lise. Welcome out everybody to my Power Rangers Dino Thunder season review of Power Rangers. Now here's the thing everybody. Power Rangers Dino Thunder is a legacy season. It is a homage to the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And sometimes when you do legacies and when you're doing like a, a legacies or like a homage to a, something that came before and you are trying to honor it, sometimes it, it could be great, sometimes it's not. The problem I have with Dino Thunder is they don't do it correctly i mean here's the thing when you're a little kid you're thinking of tommy's back tommy the original white ranger green ranger he's back so yay we get dinosaurs back yay but when you're older and now that i rewatch the season i enjoy it i think it's a very good season of power rangers but it doesn't make me love it now, when you look at, like, originality about what the Power Rangers did, about other seasons like SPD, Space, Lost Galaxy, Lightspeed Rescue, Wild Force, they have more creativity and originality than Dino Thunder. The problem is, though, with Dino Thunder, they don't have a lot of, a lot of episodes, mostly it's just homage episodes to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. One, we get the teenagers back. There's teenagers, uh, there are teenagers who are going through high school and also so we get that old stuff we still get dinosaurs and all that tommy oliver returns uh he is now a teacher he's teaching the new Dream rangers uh connor ethan and kira the blue ranger the red ranger and the yellow ranger the thing is though i don't believe they developed well the pacing of the season was off to me because i know we're all excited to see oh tommy's back tommy is uh, Tommy's going to be a ranger, and we all knew he was going to be a Power Ranger again. But the problem is, though, when you're developing the other ring, you got to develop the other rangers first, in my opinion. You're supposed to develop Connor as the leader. You're supposed to develop Kira, Ethan. Even though they did that, the pacing of it was off. Because here's the thing. In uh, 38 episodes, Tommy becomes the Black Ranger in the fifth episode. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people say, well, Tommy's not the leader of the group. Tommy's always going to be a leader. If you put a team of uh, random Power Ranger characters and Tommy's there, Tommy's either number one or he's number two. And that's the problem. That's the problem. When Tommy is the ra uh, it becomes a Black Dino Thunder Ranger in the four, in the fifth episode, you got a problem because now the characters that you're trying to develop don't get time to be developed. You're going to have it off. Yes, the, Tommy... Is a black down the ranger. He's a teacher. Yes, we develop eat them. Yes, we develop Kira. Yes, we develop Connor. But who is the leader? The Red Ranger Connor. And to me, Connor is the most over. I'm not going to call him overrated. I say he's the most mishandled Red Ranger of Power Rangers so far that I'm rewatching. It's because he doesn't really get a chance to shine. Connor, the Red Ranger. He is dumb like Dustin Dumb from Ninja Storm. Does he have his moments? Yes, but he never truly really has great episodes. I cannot stand his Battleizer episode. I mean, when the Power Rangers introduced the Battleizer stuff for the Red Rangers, the Red Rangers had to earn it. They had to go through a journey in some case. But with Connor, it just felt... It, it just didn't feel natural. It just felt like, hey, we need to sell toys and all that stuff. But it, the story didn't progress well. And again, when you have Tommy Oliver become... The black Dino Thunder Ranger in the fifth episode? You know you got a problem for the next 38. What else are you going to develop besides Connor's the red uh, Power Ranger? He's dumb. He likes soccer. Kira's the girl with the music. And uh, she's a very outgoing and friendly. Ethan's the nerd. Ethan's the nerd that uh, uh, tries to uh, do something outside. I get it. They develop these characters, but when you have, like, Tommy, it would have been so much better if they devoted, like, the first 10, 13 episodes to these three new characters and to develop their relationships with each other. But immediately, they're getting sacked with Tommy's the leader, and Tommy is the Black Dino Thunder Ranger. He's our mentor, but he's going to help us out whenever we can. Dino Thunder didn't do a great job, in my opinion. Now, again, a lot of the issues I have is that the fact that Tommy becomes a Black Ranger... In the again the fifth episode, I do not like the fact that we get a White Ranger storyline, evil White Ranger, who basically gets like eleven episodes all devoted to him. So all in all, half the season is just not developing the other characters or giving them good story arcs, in my opinion. I mean, there are some campy, corny uh, ones that you get like from Mighty Morphin that are with Dino Thunder, but the thing is, though, you need to develop these characters. You need to develop them more to get more serious 
moments, serious drama, and when you, those little funny moments build up the character, the serious uh, moments are going to make the characters go from good to great. And I never really felt that with the original three uh, Power Rangers for this season. I didn't feel like it was a great. There was a great storyline for Kira, a great story time for Ethan or for Connor. I felt their storylines were either okay to good, but they didn't came up to that level just because of the fact that Tommy was always the level gap. And you, again, it's just a pacing issue. I just believe they relied too much on, you know, the dinosaurs, Tommy, and again, the theme song. It's it's a great theme song. It's a great season of Power Rangers. Well, it's a very good season of Power Rangers, in my opinion. But to me, I think they rely too much on nostalgia and too much on the homage of Mighty Morphin in order to actually be its own scenes, to have its own diversity, to have its own creativity. And it really didn't have much. I say the best thing about this season was the villain, Mezagog. Mezagog is a great villain. What is he? He's a guy who, he's a monster dinosaur that wants to put the Earth back to the days of the dinosaur world. That's the main thing about the villain. But this, this look of him, the, uh, the way he talks, the way he uh, just goes against his minions and all that stuff and just berates them and it's just on them, how he just whispers is so evil-like and I just love it. He has a Lord Zed presence. When you think of Mighty Morphin, Lord Zed, granted he wasn't the most consistently like great character for storytelling, but when you saw the look of Lord Zed, you saw the voice of Lord Zed, you knew shit was going to hit the fan. And Mezogog's the same thing, so they got that aspect. I think Mezogog's a great villain. Now, I know a lot of people, but Mezogog's high because he is the White Ranger's adopted father. Uh, uh what's his name? Freaking name. It's, uh, I believe his name is Mercer. And the thing is, uh, Anton Mercer. Anton Mercer is the other, uh, basically, he worked with Tommy Oliver to help with the dead, with the dinosaurs and all that stuff, to basically uh, his study of dinosaurs with Tommy. The thing is, though, he got infected, and now he's uh, like this kind of like Jekyll and Hyde stuff with Anton Mercer and Mezogog. So when he's good, he's good, and he's trying to fight the evil. Anton Mercer is a great character, but he's not Mezogog. Mezogog and Anton Mercer are completely different. You gotta take them as two separate characters. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, Mezogog was such a great character because Anton Mercer. Anton Mercer is a great character because while he was struggling being Mezogog, he doesn't let the evil corrupt him enough for him to be, uh, for his adopted son to be destroyed. So I really enjoyed Anton Mercer as a side character and I really enjoy him battle with Mezogog the villain. But Mezogog the villain was a good villain, a very good villain, but Anton Mercer was a better character in my opinion. Now, let's talk about some other things right here. Let's talk about the Trent the White Ranger. I really enjoyed Trent the White Ranger. He struggles with the whole uh, uh, Dino Gem just infecting him and turning him evil and slowly turning him evil. And when he eventually becomes good, he always has to... He's taken the place of his, like, father. He ta takes his father's side about not telling the Rangers that his father is, uh, tra is transforming into Mezga. He's trying to protect his father like his father's trying to protect him. And I think Trent is actually the standout character of freaking um, Dino Thunder. I, I enjoy Tommy, don't get me wrong, but Trent as a character and his devotion to his father and his relationship to the other Rangers is very unique and different. And I really did enjoy Trent. And again, if we're looking at the leader of the Power Rangers, it's Connor by default because it has to be. But to me, Trent was so much much more, more of an uh, interesting character. His artistic goals to the relationship with his freaking father, to having a kind of relationship with Kira. To, to trying to win the Rangers' trust, that I can be trusted, I can be good. And I think they missed out on an opportunity with both Tommy and Trent having a relationship with each other. I really think they could impact that, you know, with Tommy being a former evil Ranger and Trent the same way. I think they could develop it more and develop it better. So, and there are some other great characters in the show, but the problem is, when you rely solely, and I'm not saying there ain't, like, Good episodes, great episodes. I really enjoyed the team up episode with uh, Ninja Storm and Dino Thunder, where the Ninja Storm Rangers turned evil and Lothor came back and he fought Mezogog. That was a great, uh, great spin off episode, great team up episode. It was just a great episode in general. But to me, Dino Thunder didn't really have much stand on other than, hey, look, we have dinosaurs. If you replace the dinosaurs with Operations Overdrive look, this season wouldn't be as beloved. Suits can make one thing, but the story is what matters. And when you have a basically a rinse, repeat, same storyline from previous seasons of Power Rangers, it just doesn't hold up to me. So I know a lot of people are going to be like, 
You didn't get down with a chance. I did get down with a chance, but to me, it was not the best season of Power Rangers. And I think for creativity, for originality, and I get it's supposed to be a whole bunch of legacy season of Power Rangers, but to me, it just felt a bit lazy. Now that I'm older, I still enjoy the season. I would still give the season a B plus, but I will nowhere think about giving it an A minus. I enjoyed SPD weight uh, a lot more, Lightspeed Rescue, Wild Force. And even some cases, I think Ninja Storm was better than this. Ninja Storm was consistently uh, was consistent about what it wanted to be, which was a corny dang TV show, uh, a corny dang season of Power Rangers. But it just felt like it just felt like a good season of Power Rangers. So to me, Down Thunder was a very very good season of Power Rangers, but it was not great. It, it was something that hold it back. But that's my personal opinion, everybody. Let me know what y'all think, everyone. Angel Lee, Scarfed, everybody. Uh, bye bye.